Welcome back year three. So today we're reading chapter five and if you can remember the title of it is Keep Yelling Young'un. Now I asked you at the end of the last chapter if you could have a think about what might be about to happen in chapter five and I said the clue was in the title. So who was it that calls Babe Young'un? So who is saying Keep Yelling Young'un? So hopefully you've made a little bit of a prediction. Let's find out what happens. Now, at the very beginning, we have a picture of a lady. Now, have a little think. Maybe tell a grown-up or a sibling or whoever sat listening with you. How do you think that person is feeling? Have a look at the features of her face. Do you think she's feeling happy or sad? A bit scared, maybe? Shocked? Angry, tired. Have a think. See if you can tell somebody. If you're on your own, that's fine. Just keep it in your head. Mrs. Hoggett shook her head at least a dozen times. For the life of me, I can't see why you do let that pig run all over the place like you do. Round and round the yard he do go, chasing my ducks about, shoving his nose into everything. Shouldn't wonder what but what he'll be out with you and fly moving the sheep before long. Why doesn't shut him up? He's running all his flesh off. He won't never be fit for Christmas, Easter more like. What do you call him? Just pig, said Farmer Hoggett. A month had gone by since the village fair, a month in which a lot of interesting things had happened to Babe. The fact that perhaps most concerned his future, though he did not know it, was that Farmer Hoggett had become fond of him. He liked to see the piglet pottering happily about the yard with Fly, keeping out of mischief, as far as he could tell, if he didn't count moving the ducks around. He did this now with a good deal of skill, the farmer noticed, even to the extent of being able, once, to separate the white ducks from the brown, though that must just have been a fluke. The more he thought of it, the less Farmer Hoggett liked the idea of butchering pig. The other developments were in Babe's education. Despite herself, Fly found that she took pleasure and pride in teaching him the ways of the sheepdog, though she knew that, of course, he would never be fast enough to work sheep. Anyway, the boss would never let him try. As for Ma, she was back with the flock. Her foot healed, her cough better, but all the time that she had been shut in the box, Babe had spent every moment the fly was out of the stables chatting to the old ewe. Already he understood in a way that fly never could, the sheep's point of view. He longed to meet the flock, to be introduced. He thought it would be extremely interesting. Now, I wonder if anybody can remember what the word you means. I know it means you and I. But there was another word, there was another meaning for it. Let me read that sentence again. Um, Babe had spent every moment the fly was out of the stables chatting to the old you. Can you remember? If you've got a grown-up with you, tell your grown-up if you can remember. <clears throat> Excuse me, where am I? He longed to meet the flock to be introduced. He thought it would be extremely interesting. Do you think I could, Ma? He had said. Could what, young'un? Well, come and visit you when you go back to your friends. Oh, ah, you could do easy enough. You only got to go through the bottom gate and up the hill to the big field by the lane. Don't know what the farmer would say, though. Or that wolf. Once Fly had slipped quietly in and found him perched on the straw rack. Stack. Babe, she had said sharply. You're not talking to that stupid thing, are you? Well... Yes, Mum, I was. Save your breath, dear. It won't understand a word you say. But, said Ma. For a moment, Babe was tempted to tell his foster mother what he had in mind, but something told him to keep quiet. Instead, he made a plan. He would wait for two things to happen. First, for Ma to rejoin the flock, and after that, for market day, when both the boss and his mum would be out of the way. Then... He would go up the hill. There's a little picture of Babe here, look, looking rather pleased with himself. Towards the end of the very next week, the two things happened. Ma had been turned out, and a couple of days after that, Babe watched as Fly jumped into the back of the Land Rover, and it drove out of the yard and away. 
Babes were not the only eyes that watched its departure. At the top of the hill, a cattle lorry stood half hidden under a clump of trees at the side of the lane. As soon as the Land Rover had disappeared from sight along the road to the market town, a man jumped hurriedly out and opened the gate into the field. Another backed the lorry into the gateway. I wonder who these people are that are going into Mars Field. Babe, meanwhile, was trotting excitedly up the hill to pay his visit to the flock. He came to the gate at the bottom of the field and squeezed under it. The field was steep and curved, and at first he could not see a single sheep. But then he heard a distant drumming of hooves, and suddenly the whole flock came galloping over the brow of the hill and down towards him. Around them ran two strange collies, lean, silent dogs that seemed to flow effortlessly over the grass. From high above came the sound of a thin whistle, and in easy partnership, the dogs swept round the sheep and began to drive them back up the slope. And there's a lovely picture here. Hopefully you can see that. A babe stood in the field watching these two collies moving the sheep around. I wonder where they're supposed to be taking them. And I wonder who their master is. <clears throat> Despite himself, babe was caught up in the press of jostling, bleating animals and carried along with them. Around him rose a chorus of panting, protesting voices, some shrill, some hoarse, some deep and guttural, but all saying the same thing. Wolf! Wolf! cried the flock in dazed confusion. Small cut by comparison and short in the leg, Babe soon fell behind the main body, and as they reached the top of the hill, he found himself right at the back in company with an old sheep who cried, Wolf! more loudly than any. Ma! he cried breathlessly. It's you! Behind them, one dog lay down at a whistle, and in front the flock checked as the other dog steadied them. In the corner of the field, the tailboard and wings of the cattle lorry filled the gateway, and the two men waited, sticks and arms outspread. Oh, hello, young un, puffed the old sheep. Fine day you chose to come, I'll say. What is it? What's happening? Who are these men? asked Babe. Rustlers, said Ma. Them sheep rustlers. What do you mean? Thieves, young un. That's what I do mean. Sheep stealers. We'll all be in thick lorry afore you can blink your eye. What can we do? Do? There ain't nothing we can do unless we can slip past the sea, a wolf. She made as if to escape, but the dog behind darted in and she turned back. Again, one of the men whistled in the dog press. Gradually, held against the headland of the field by the second dog and the men, the flock began to move forward. Already the leaders were nearing the tailboard of the lorry. Oh my goodness me. I'm a little bit worried for these poor sheep. Wind beat, said Ma mournfully. You run for it, young un. I will, thought Babe, but not the way you mean. Little as he was, he felt suddenly not fear, but anger, furious anger, that the boss's sheep were being stolen. My mum's not here to protect them, so I must, he said to himself bravely. And he ran quickly round the hedge side of the flock and jumping on to the bottom of the tailboard, turned to face them. Please, he cried, I beg you, please don't come any further, if you would be so kind, dear sensible sheep. His unexpected appearance had a number of immediate effects. The shock of being so politely addressed stopped the flock in its tracks, and the cries of wolf changed to murmurs of, Ain't he lovely? And proper little gentleman. Ma had told them something of her new friend, and now to see him in the flesh and to hear his well-chosen words released them from the dominance of the dogs. They began to fidget and look about from a, for an escape route. This was opened for them when the men, cursing quietly for above all things they were anxious to avoid too much noise, sent the flanking dog to drive the pig away, and some of the sheep began to slip past them. A little picture of Babe there, look, I think he's on the, on the tail of the trailer, stopping them from going up. Next moment, all was chaos. Angrily, the dog ran at Babe, who scuttled away, squealing at the top of his voice in a mixture of fright and fury. The men closed on him, sticks raised. Desperately, he shot between the legs of one who fell with a crash, while the other, striking out madly, hit the rear guard dog. So 
sorry, hit the rearguard dog as it came to help and sent it yowling. In half a minute, the carefully planned raid was ruined as the sheep scattered everywhere. Keep yelling, young un, bawled Ma as she rammed aside babe. They won't never stop here with that row going on. There's a little picture of babe and Ma running across the field, I think, well, it's a bit. <clears throat> and suddenly all sorts of things began to happen as those deafening squeals rang out over the quiet countryside. Birds flew startled from the trees. Cows in nearby fields began to gallop about. Dogs in distant farms to bark, passing motorists to stop and stare. In the farmhouse below, Mrs Hoggett heard the noise as she had on the day of the fair, but now it was infinitely louder. The most piercing, nerve-tingling, ear-shattering burglar alarm. She dialed 999. I wondered, when if you know, if you dial 999, who do you get to speak to? Hmm. You mustn't try it, though. This is something just for adults to do. Talk about it with an adult if you're not sure. She dialed 999, but then talked for so long that by the time a patrol car drive up, drove up the lane, the rustler had locked. The rustlers had long gone, snarling at each other and their dogs. They had driven hurriedly away with not one single sheep to show for their pains. <clears throat> you won't never believe it, cried Mrs Hoggett when her husband returned from market. But we've had rustlers. Just after you'd gone, it were. Come with a girt cattle lorry, they did, the police said. They seen the tire marks in the gateway. And a chap in a car seen the lorry go by in a hurry. And there's been a lot of it about. And he gave the alarm he did. Kept screaming and shrieking enough to bust your eardrums. We should have lost every sheep on the place twerent, if twerent for him. Tis him we've got to thank. Who? said Farmer Hoggett. Him! said his wife, pointing at Babe, who was telling Fly all about it. Don't ask me how he got there or why he done it. All I knows is he saved our bacon and now I'm going to save his. He's stopping with us just like any other dog. Don't care if he gets so big as a house. Because if you think I'm going to stand by and see him butchered after what he done for us today, you've got another thing come in. What do you say to that? A slow smile spread over Farmer Hoggett's face. And there's a picture of Farmer Hoggett. Now remember, he's a man that doesn't say very much. So why has he suddenly got a big smile on his face? What is it that Mrs. Hoggett was saying to him that he's so happy about? Now, can you remember at the beginning of the chapter, I asked you a little challenge to work out who it was that said, keep yelling, young'un. Now, if you noticed, just a couple of pages ago, let me find it back. In the field, when the babe had stopped the sheep from going on the on the trailer, there was somebody that said, "Keep yelling, young'un." Can you remember who it was? Can you tell a grown-up? Can you tell a brother or a sister who it was? It was Ma, his lovely friend from the sh from the field. So there we go. Well done if you got it right. Now. That's the end of that chapter, and I shall be back for chapter six next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.